I don't have a whole lot. Um, I've just been reviewing everybody's, um, since we're all, everybody's caught up with their reimbursements up through uh, June. So I've just been kind of doing like an overview of the activities that everybody's been working on and things like that. And then we're, when we do our in-person grantee meeting in a couple weeks, I'll kind of have a little bit of an overview of that. That'll give you guys an idea of like kind of big picture, the different activities that everybody's doing across the state and different things like that. So. So I had something to share. Sure. Uh, so I know I sound like a recording over and over about <laughs> our ACHs, but I that's the biggest barrier both on the state side and on the tribal side. So mm -hmm. we do not, just for everybody's information, we do not receive a reimbursement once we put it in. It doesn't come the next month like that. So for those who may have to budget accordingly, um, it, it, it is a, a barrier and for me. It has been a barrier since I started because mm -hmm. I do all the finances on my end and I report to finance. So I do the cuff account. I do the drawdowns. I do the reimbursements. I do everything. And I mentioned that before, but what I'm saying is um, it's hard to run programs when the finance part of it doesn't come in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. And that's by by no means am I saying somebody's not doing their job. Um, we've both on the state side and on the tribal side have had turnover in that finance department probably ever since I started also. But there has to be a way that we can combat that because that doesn't balance out my cuff till the end of the year. So I just now got ACHs and some of them were combined from March, April, May, um, yeah. December, January, February. Um, and so just that fact of um, just, it, it, it kind of just, if, if there's a way, so I know we talked about this before Callie, like yeah. I'm thinking even if, like you have the the reimbursement form that you approve of and it says approved of on there even if i could get a copy of that that kind of gives me an initiation or a support of a document saying that that money's coming that way i can initiate the drawdown oh so, sure sure yeah yeah so so it's just for factual like okay it's coming and that would just suffice the the initiation of the drawdown would be just that form. And so um, it may be a more sim simpler solution. Yeah, if if that's something, if if to help things on your end run a little smoother, yeah. um, what I mean yeah. that. If it's just a matter of getting a copy of that SFN form with my signature on it saying yeah. that the first level of approval has been done, yeah, um, I can definitely do that. I, I typically approve them the day I receive them, though. It's after they, it's after I submit them to our fiscal department that they unfortunately sit there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how beneficial it is as it's going to be on your end. If you do need oh. some sort of signature or something, I can definitely start doing that and, mm -hmm. and, you know, come up with somewhat of a solution if there's anybody else that's struggling with that. But well, yeah. it's, it's definitely, unfortunately, out of my hands once, yeah. once I receive them, I review them and I send them off for 
the other layers of approval. So it's my yeah. signature is the first layer of approval. Then it's our policy director and then it's our finance manager. Yeah. And so that's it's that process that takes a while. Yeah, ours, ours on this end is like that, too. And so mm -hmm. I've been just trying to get on top of it. And I'm like, OK, again, I'm sitting this year with the same barrier. And mm -hmm. it's like, so if we could. And, yeah, and if, if, if it makes it one, easier, if it makes yeah. it easier for me to send you back a copy with just yeah. my signature on it saying, hey, yeah. I've approved this. Now we're yeah. waiting for the other levels of approval. If that helps, that's definitely something I can do. Yeah. If you and if there's anybody that else that out. needs something like that done, I can definitely kind of weave that into my process of reviewing just yeah. to help if there is anybody else that's experiencing any barriers like that. So the simplest thing but it's not okay you know no and i understand and i i under and... i understand mm -hmm. your frustration with it trust me i know i was just griping the other day about you know we're, we're going to be next week we're going to be in phoenix for the npn conference and that's you know we're paying for as a state employee we typically yeah. pay for our expenses up front and unfortunately we have to wait for wait, the for reimbursement process for our travel expenses and I don't know about you guys, but I don't make a ton of money. It's it's expensive having yeah. to pay for a hotel up front and things like that. So I feel your frustration there for sure. And unfortunately, yeah. we're stuck kind of dealing with the same thing in in that capacity. So and then I, Tom, I understand is it on the call. No, mm -hmm. Tom had to take another call, unfortunately, that took higher yeah. priority of some other stuff that we've got going on. So he's not on the call. But if there's anything that I need to pass along to him, yes, okay, uh, so we'll definitely I, do that. I sent him an email requesting TA assistance for okay. um, uh, alcohol um, tax increase. Okay. So I'm going to need assistance with um, doing that, like writing up the resolution. Um, I, I'm not sure what the 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 amount that we can do or any of that. So I kind of need some education on that end. Okay. And then also on um I had on the same email I had um mentioned to him that the casino for the ID scanner have Mondays and Tuesdays available for the training and that they it would be like seven to 10 um, employees that would get trained on the ID scanner. Also, I I couldn't remember who the other, um, so I need some education on ID scanners. And I couldn't remember what um, public health was working on it. So I could look at the video from their presentation. Or do you have something that I can watch? um i will have to check with tom on that something to be... watch on the actual forensic id scanner training okay, okay. um yeah i don't know if he's yeah. got something up on on youtube i don't think we have anything on our website that's the actual training part of it mm -hmm. i think he's been doing those primarily in person but i can ask him yeah. And if then, there's anything I, th I was just gonna say i think there is um the company that does the ID scanners has a training video that you could watch. It is helpful. I mean, it is nice to have Tom oh. come out and he can show you some other different little tips and tricks and things, but there is a training video from the company. From Token okay. Works. Okay. Let me let me check to see if that's on our uh website, like with okay. that forensic ID scanner toolkit, if we've got the link to the video in there. And then um the the information that it gathers goes where it goes to them if i remember the, correctly no, or to the company sorry say that again the information goes where then i think to the company i okay. i don't know the answer to that in all honesty yeah. i would have to ask I tom are okay. you asking where the information that is gathered by the id scan scanner goes yeah 
Yes. Okay, so when the ID scanner, it just has a database kind of built in and it saves the information. We have to go like each month or each quarter and we go through and we look and we count how many fake IDs, um, how many IDs were scanned, how many I fake IDs were found. Um, and then we also try to ask if they confiscated the IDs. That's the hardest part is getting the, the establishments to confiscate the IDs because it's hard to confront people who want to drink um, and that had paid money for those fake IDs. So that's the hardest part, but that's where the information goes. It's stored in the database. It doesn't go sent out anywhere. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. 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 That part I cool. wasn't sure on. Um, do you, do you download the data for yourself or do you just have to kind of manually look at it to get those numbers, Jessica? I think there's a way to download it. I don't know that we download those names and stuff like that. We go in and we count and gather okay. the data from what's in there. So is Got that it. wherever the ID scanner's at, you go? Yep, the physical location. So if it's okay. stored in the device like a computer. Okay, okay. I thought, I thought for some reason that you could upload it, like upload the digital data, but I think I'm wrong in that assumption that you that it is just stored on the device itself i think i remember tom talking about like you could have you could add an additional like a subscription fee to yeah. do something more with the data but that's optional and not not really needed yeah yeah <clears throat> I, was, I was just wondering because the casino security director asks me and i'm like uh uh hold on I, I don't know that much about it, but I'll mm -hmm. find out. And so that's why I was asking because they were real persistent about getting back to me and then getting the training. So I'm kind sure. of excited. And they also have um beverage server training there, or they have people that are trained there already. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And I know like for first district, for example, Tom did kind of a joint thing where he came in and did the forensic ID scanner training for the state fair. And then they did the responsible beverage server training right after. And that worked out really wow. well for them, I think, um, to kind of do it all at once. Well, um, I think then it, gonna... it kind of goes hand in hand. So we're practicing at the um, prairie nights and before they even got the one ID scanner, they were already requesting two more. Okay. Yeah, and I think that they, they, um, because we have the um, Grand River Casino on our South Dakota side, that they may be interested in putting um, one up down there. So uh, I'm kind of excited to get the first training going and then see um, where it goes from there. And uh, just the um, information gathering just um, gets me excited to see, you know yeah to kind of see how how effective yeah. it will be and yeah, yeah for sure if we can make that um, change or yeah it looks like robin put in the chat the link to the scanner training video but Thank i will pass along to tom um the dates that you said for getting a training set up it it likely won't be until at the end of the month just because we have uh tom tori and myself will be out all next week um for that conference and then we have our in-person training uh the 19th and 20th so it might oh, not okay. be until i have a feeling tom's going to be pretty busy this week trying to wrap things up before the conference so yeah and i did um my acting supervisor did talk to our um judicial committee chair about the um um the uh liquor um tax fee to be raised okay. and they, they don't feel like um there's going to be a problem with it being raised we have okay. um just opened somebody just opened a drive through liquor store right beside us over here by my building and so people are not liking it our ambulance came in yesterday and said we had so many calls oh wow and, yeah and so it's already that's, that's that's good though if you're getting feedback from other people in the community that they they'd be receptive to raising taxes because i know just from what tom has kind of echoed over the years is that raising taxes is one of the most difficult things to do but it's also one of the most effective so if you guys can pass that that'll be really really good i think 
Well, and it's encouraging when you have the committee or the chair asking and saying that, oh, if it comes from the AOD program, it probably won't have a problem getting through. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, please, that's that that's really me. good. Yeah. It shows I'm you're like, being effective in your work and that's awesome. Good job. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but before we got to off topic, this is Miranda. I just wanted to make a suggestion. I know it was brought up that people are having a hard time confiscating the fake IDs. We have oh. an incentive program where any bartender who does take a fake ID gets a $50 note, like here's 50 bucks just for getting that. And so it incentivizes the bartenders to take them and have a physical ID um, because then there's actually something in it for them um, to have that awkward, uncomfortable um, conversation. So that's just something yes. that's worked with me. Yep, yep, that's a good idea. Um, are you, I know, are you, and, are you able I'm to sorry. do that with your scepter funds? So it's it's got to be the workaround. So no, oh. not directly. Oh. We can't do the actual incentive of paying the bartenders. But if when you claim your forensic ID scanner use and oh. the other activities that you're doing for the month, once you get that reimbursement funds, it's yours what you want to do with. So if you want to okay. budget your funds accordingly after the fact, that's the workaround. So um, we can we do it, but we don't that. report it. Correct. We can't claim that as an activity. That is something that is at your discretion once the funds are received. So that's the workaround. Um, dollar amount is up to you. I know I'm pretty sure First District is doing $25, if I remember correctly. So there's there are other places that are doing similar incentive programs for collecting those fake IDs. Um but that's definitely something you guys can play around with. But yes, it's not something that we can directly fund. That was explained very well, Callie. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I try to, I try to, with, with the different things that you guys are doing, you guys are super creative in a lot of the activities that you do. If it's something that, that we can't directly fund, you know, something that falls under promotional items or things like that. I try to find a workaround for you guys so you guys can still do the work and, and make it happen because you guys are doing some great things out there. So we want to make sure we can cover as much as possible. Um, so I think I think it's important too that our um our like our um co-workers like myself and my department tribal health um that at some point in time when we have our staff meetings up and running that I would like the state to come down and explain that to and talk about our partnership mm -hmm. with the state and talk about that because a lot of people don't understand the reimbursement process and sure, uh, and, sure. And, and, and they're questioning stuff you're doing and you're like, I've already done the work. Yeah, they, sure. That, that, that isn't a clear understanding and I don't know why, but I thought, well, coming from this, our state people coming down here and explaining it. Um, I know I did that when I first started seven times, Tom had to come down here and explain stuff to our finance. And it's because they don't understand that reimbursement process. And yes, you can bank your money here. Once you've received it, you've done the work. It yep. stays within the scope of prevention. That's it. Stays within the scope of prevention. Yeah. And people do not get that. Yeah, it is. It is tough to understand. One of the ways that I have explained it to people in the past is um, imagine that you're a contractor and somebody is paying you to do different things that fall under your job duties. And you have basically when you when you work with this person, you're a contractor, you give them a menu of items or a menu of services that you do you know it could be in terms of a house contractor it could be roofing flooring siding you know landscaping those are your categories and then under there you have all the different de details that fall under the activities that you do for your contracting job this is very similar in that aspect where you you have a menu of items under these different prevention categories and each activity kind of falls under those categories you're being reimbursed the same way a contractor would be reimbursed after completion of a job. So that's another analogy that you could potentially use to explain it. But um, yeah, Tom and I are more than happy to come down and do 
you know, if he already plans on doing a training and technical assistance thing with you, I could easily come down and kind of talk about the reimbursement process and help answer any questions or things like that. If, if that's something that's needed with your, um, you know, the, everybody that that's kind of overseeing this. So. Did anybody else have any questions about kind of the work that you guys are doing, um, you know, the reimbursement process, anything like that? So is everybody doing like a PowerPoint for the next, the next presentation or the next meeting on the 19th? The in, the, the in-person meeting? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe so but i'd have not, to actually look at the agenda yeah not everyone yeah. is doing it there's just a select few that we've that have brought up points that we want to kind of discuss more the action steps to help everybody else so there's just a few select groups if you were reached if lori reached out to you from growth partners those okay. will be the groups that are presenting okay and then um because again i'm saying um because I had a discussion with Lori and them too. And I'm like, I watched the video of a, our presentation and I'm, I said, um, about a million times. And <laughs> that I'm like, is okay. I am not a presenter. And I told them I'm, I felt so after I watched myself, I was like, I had like a, like a, like a trauma trigger from speech class. And I'm, <laughs> cause I remember. Yeah, that's what he did. He sat there and he like marked all of the ums and I'm like, ah, I had a, <laughs> I had a moment. You're not alone, Tammy. <laughs> I despise listening to myself speak back on a recording and things like that. So that it's, we're pretty easygoing here, even when it's in person in front of like the, you know, the group, you know, in one of the big meetings. We're yeah. all pretty easygoing. We don't mind. We're not gonna. Yeah. We're not I, gonna judge I, anybody for their public speaking skills. So <laughs> no worries. You've got nothing to worry about. Well, my daughter goes. Well, mom, just get that word out of your vocabulary and don't <laughs> use it anymore and replace it with something else. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Crazy. I had a thought when when um, Tammy was talking about the forensic scanners and really um, how much of a not like a one time you know event that it is when you have a scanner with an establishment. It's really just like the first step in really establishing that relationship and that partnership with them because when you go in um every month to visit with them um Lori and I have been going in together to check the scanners just because I go in with a little bit of a different mission than she's actually getting the scanner numbers off um and I often will be, bring some um you know tabletops with the oh why can't I think of it now speak volumes I, I speak volumes I'll <laughs> take that in and you know, um, there's usually patrons there, or I bring up, you know, a recent event that may be involved in, you know, a drunk driver or a fatality, and we'll have those conversations um, based on over servage and underage, you know, us losing an underage person from drunk driving or just those things so that we're saying thank you for um, a little thank you for keeping alcohol out of the hands of underage people and our coasters that we give out. And so that it's more of a partnership mm -hmm. with the establishment instead of like, we're coming in over you to, you know, to squander your business. Cause that's really mm -hmm. not what we're doing. And I, you know, like I, I feel like when we walk in, cause we don't ever know what time of the day is going to work for us to go in, but you know, it's almost like, um, cheers a little bit, you know, like they know us, we know them, um, helping get those apps on the phone. And now we started with Andy tip and I took, I take the little QR code and say, Hey, you know, this is just to report 
you know, things that seem suspicious, you can use it for whatever. And so those are just, that's, I feel like the scanners and some of those things are just the beginning of that relationship and changing the culture in your community to be saying, this is, we want safe communities. We want our children safe. And once they understand those things and they're, they're very much receptive because many of them have children or grandchildren. And when it's brought about in that perspective, um, you feel a little bit more like a team. And, and I think that that's just, you know, it's not a once and done, oh, you have a scanner. It's kind of like, yeah, we're partners here and we're here for the long haul to help you um, troubleshoot the things on the scanner and all that because there are things come up and then, you know, we just did updates on ours and it took quite a while, but you know, to make sure those establishments aren't getting frustrated with the scanners and they know that they can reach out and you can come out and, you know, take care of those technicalities for them so that it's up and running smoothly because they don't have time during their business when it's busy and they're using them to troubleshoot that. So um, just view it as a view it as a relationship builder, um, I think, is what was going through yeah, my head that's... when she's talking. That's a really good point. It, it's a good opportunity that opens the door to have those other conversations. And by having those conversations and just the opportunity, that can lead to much more impact. And and because that's really, that is one of the big catalysts of change is just being able to have those one-on-one -on -one connections with people and kind of get people to think about things differently. Because then, you know, then what they're going to do, they're going to go and talk to somebody that they know. Oh, guess what I learned today about this, you know, this fake ID thing and just different things. They're going to it's it's going to kind of snowball. And that is a really, really good way to help start to change those community norms, which is one of the most difficult things to change. It starts with having those conversations for sure. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that, Cindy. That's a really, really good point. And then. I know I've reiterated this before, but just so you guys know, you know, as far as the forensic ID scanners, she mentioned kind of going in every month, collecting the data, going and troubleshooting for them, you know, if they need um, need assistance on updating it and things like that, and then kind of using that opportunity to do some of these other activities. You can, so in the reimbursement process under, on attachment A, um, under that utilization of forensic ID scanners at a retail establishment, that is the base amount that you guys can get every month. But in addition to that, if you guys are doing things like when you go into that bar to do some technical assistance or some updates and it's more than, you know, it's more than once a month or you're doing other things like you're handing out uh, uh, speak volumes materials and things like that, you can add on to that $200 amount you can kind of claim those activities separately. You'll still want to be cognizant of how much you're claiming based on, you know, each category has that kind of cap on it. And then you guys have your just overall budget of your block grant funds to make sure it's stretching throughout the three years. Um, but you guys can kind of add on activities as you see fit if you are doing more than just providing that basic, you know, connecting with them every month to collect the data. So there's there's opportunity there. And then again, that money, you know, you can essentially bank that if you want to set aside, for example, two hundred dollars every month that can go towards, you know, an incentive program that you set up or something like that. So. OK, is there anything else that anybody wanted to share? Well, if not, we can definitely have a little bit of a shorter meeting. I'm sure nobody will argue with that. So, plus, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks in our in person meeting. So, those always go good. We always have some good conversations there and good questions asked and everything. So, um, we will wrap this up then. And as usual, once I get it sent to our comms team and posted to YouTube, because uh, I, that, that was the easier workaround in trying to upload it to our grantee website. So once we get it posted, then you guys will have it on the um, 
grantee portal to look at later if you want to. But I will let you guys go for the rest of the morning. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see everybody in a couple of weeks.